In this video, we'll take a look at five tips to improve your night scenes in architecture. So night scenes can be challenging, especially because they require one step further in terms of rendering settings where you need to take care of lighting. And then in post-production with Photoshop where every asset you add needs to be adjusted and dialed to fit the scene. If done right, it can have a huge impact on the viewer, that being a client, professor, or even in a competition. But missing just a few things can totally break the composition. That's why usually daytime renderings are considered a bit easier although it has its challenges too. So in this video, I'll show you the five things that I always look after when creating night scenes using this particular image. And I created this image only for this video to test these tips. And since this is a visualization video, I didn't design the cabin from scratch. I found this reference on Arc Daily and then gave it a twist to the entrance and interior layout. Now this video is sponsored by Concept D, and I used the Concept D7 easel in every step of the process, from modeling to rendering all the way to Photoshop. If you like videos that talk about architectural visualization and representation, be sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any future content. And now let's go take a look at the tips. 1. Contrast in color. During the night, buildings usually get more transparent. They light up from the inside. It's the opposite of day scenes where usually the windows create so much reflection that they can look like mirrors. So we gotta take advantage of that. It's a way to draw attention to what matters. I feel that day scenes you show more of a general view and then night ones you can create a moodier and interesting shot. That's not a rule, but just a suggestion. So accentuating or working with the colors and their contrast is something to look after. Usually by having opposite colors and color temperatures like orange slash yellowish inside and bluish on the outside. You can start taking care of this step already in your render engine. Uh, you can switch, for example, the default sun for an HDRI map. Most rendering engines have this option. Then you choose a map around evening or early night hours with a blue atmosphere. And it's important to say that usually a sunset look is better than total darkness at night. You need to be able to see the exterior too, right? HDRI Heaven is a free website, definitely worth taking a look at. Personally, in V-Ray, for example, I like to use the real-time rendering to fine-tune these settings, test many different HDRI maps and light configurations before deciding what I'm going for, so having a strong graphics card for this step is definitely recommended. The Concept D7 easel comes with an NVIDIA Studio GPU and I had no performance drops at all. And specs like this will allow you to work not only with V-Ray, but with pretty much any real-time render out there, even Lumion that is famous for needing a beefier setup. Now listen, while you're testing lighting, make sure to use warm temperatures, all right? Remember, contrast between yellow, orange, and blue and cyan tends to create beautiful looking compositions on night scenes. And this process of contrast in colors actually relates to the second tip, contrast in lighting. Make sure to leave that HDRI with a low light intensity so that when you add the interior lights, the building does in fact lights up. Because if you get the colors correct, but then the entire image has the same values and no contrast, you get a flat composition that doesn't draw the attention to the correct spots. And night scenes for me are so powerful because they direct people's eyes to the architecture, more specifically to the interior space. And as I said, the best night scenes have a dark atmosphere with a bright and glowy inside. And this style fits perfectly with a cabin-like building. So as you dial the colors, you can also work the intensity. And remember that the overall image exposure that every render engine has can be your friend to find that sweet spot of dark exterior and bright interior. See, in my experience, there's just so much you can do in a rendering setting before it turns into a really long and advanced process. After all, as architects, visualizing is just one part of the process and we're not really full-time archivist professionals, right? So tips one and two can be perfected during post-production in Photoshop. For example, you can use a soft round brush with bright yellow and just dab a couple of times over the windows. Change the blend mode of that layer to overlay and even create another layer just like this one, but leave it in normal. And that quick and easy move already enhances a lot of that glowy and lit up look. And this is where it's great to have an accurate color display. And the Concept D7 ISO screen is incredibly color accurate. 
It's a 4K Pentone validated screen, has a 100% RGB color gamut, and a color accuracy of Delta E less than two. Well, these specs may not make sense at all, I know, but it means that you'll be able to work with all the color nuances and choose that exact yellow orange color that you wanted, for example. Now it's here in Photoshop that you can really go further and make the interior feel like it's pulsating light through the openings. There's a video here on the channel that I explore a lot more on this technique, how to light up things directly in Photoshop. I'm gonna leave it on the cards and in the video description for you to check it out. Okay, so you got that contrast in colors and light going on. Now comes the third tip, making sure that the cutouts are perfectly placed. Sometimes in day scenes, you can just throw a couple of people on the scene and call it a day. But then on night scenes, they look too obviously out of place if nothing is done. So use hue and saturation adjustment layers to add a colorized adjustment with a blue tint. And then also use the levels adjustment to match the values of the cutout to the scene. And always, always, always remember to clip the adjustments to the actual cutout layer or it will affect the entire image. And making them dark and adjusting the colors is one step but making sure that the light is also bouncing on the silhouettes is what takes it to the next level. For example, here with this fire pit, adding a stroke of light of what would be the firelight bouncing on them is what really makes them feel in place. And listen, this is done progressively. You can use the mask from the filter to make them blue and dark, and then using that mask, remove where you want to add the highlights. Then create new layers with the overlay blend mode and slowly add the highlights with the bright yellow or orange color. You need to do it in small steps so that it doesn't look out of place or too intense. The video that I just mentioned has a lot more in-depth tips on this specific move. It's really not hard, just a bit time consuming it is. And remember that your source of light will affect other objects as well. So paint some light on the flooring, uh, never forgetting that the shadows will still exist. And even on surfaces that face the light and are somewhat close to it, like the tree here and very subtly on the stilts. By the way, if you want to learn architectural visualization, more specifically post predictions, we have a course over our platform about that. It's about day scenes, but still, it's the foundation you need to explore more advanced things. Links in the video description. Tip number four is about story. Maybe this tip applies just as much to any type of rendering actually, but especially in night scenes, we can create a narrative around this type of image. Studying references is a great way to learn and see the different possibilities, and you need to consider your building type here too. Maybe it's a building that has a different user density at night or different use, so just populating to generically add human scale isn't ideal. Imagine just adding like 10 people walking around here wouldn't make sense, right? And personally, my suggestion is to try different activities and, and test some options. Like first here, I wanted to go for a hiker coming back at the end of the day for her cabin, but then this just felt too lonely. And only after I went for the fire pit group. The thing is, a good looking rendering with correct settings is one thing, but framing your image properly and then telling a story is what will set your images apart. Now last but not least, the fifth tip, surroundings. This now is the opposite of the last four ones. Instead of doing it right or taking extra care, uh, the trees or buildings or whatever may be that surrounds your project don't need to be 100% correct. Different from day scenes where surroundings are really visible and screwing it up can draw too much attention, the idea of surroundings in night scenes is that they they will be really dark, so it's much more of silhouettes, volumes, and just getting the overall idea. There's a much higher margin of error here. For example, here I added a background image, played with the masks, and then manually painted the trunks to feel like there's a forest back there. And as you imagine, I used the same adjustments to make it dark and bluish. Usually I create uh, the sets of adjustments that I'm gonna use and I just duplicate throughout the file so that everything has the same hue and darkness values, just fine tuning if needed. Now heavy post-productions and renderings can generate really large files, so it's imperative that you have a solid state drive and not any type of SSD. The Concept D7 easel, you get an MVME PCIe, which I mean, it sounds all fancy and, and, and all, but it's just to say that it's the fastest type of them all. You gotta look into that. 
And the connection between the PSD file, which is the Photoshop file, and assets can benefit a lot from this extra speed that the SSD has. From all these tips, in short, uh, if I could sum up how to make night scenes, you basically get a day scene, take out the hard shadows and sunlight, so it would look something like this, which is already pretty good, right? And then you apply a lot of these filters that I mentioned, of these color and values adjustments to make it moody and dark. And that's basically it. Then for night scenes, I like to finish with a camera raw filter, as always, to punch in some details and refine color hues. And this obviously has no recipe, it really depends on your image and composition. So I usually open the camera raw filter and start sliding all the sliders to see how it affects your image. Then as a very last step, a color balance adjustment can come a long way to finalize the image color palette. Here you can pick the shadows and then make everything more cyan and blue. And then you pick highlights and slide towards red and yellow. It's all about those subtle adjustments and subtle moves that build up to create an outstanding final image. If you try to get this look all at once, it probably won't look good. It takes a little bit more time to take extra care in each layer, but in the end, looking at this result, it's definitely worth it. All right, five tips that will certainly help you create better night scenes. This list is what I personally look after when creating my images, but I know that this can vary from person to person. So, what do you consider the most vital things when creating night scenes? Please let everyone know in the comments below so we can learn from each other. Also, do you have any night scenes you'd like to share? We do these weekly competitions on Instagram called Followers Work, where everyone can submit their renderings, diagrams and sketches to compete for a prize at the end of the month. So be sure to send yours through DMs at LearnUpstairs on Instagram. Thanks again to Concept D for supporting Upstairs. This enables us to keep creating free content for you guys. Now here are two videos that I think you're gonna like it if you stayed until here. I'll see you guys in the next video.